In this video, I will be going over Pure Land by Mariko Mori and Shiva as the Lord of Dance. To start things off, let's go over Pure Land. It is made by Mariko Mori, 1998 CE, in its color photograph on glass. In the Pure Land, we can see a more so pastel color scheme with a golden sky. The setting that the Pure Land is being taken place at is the Dead Sea. In the water, we can see a lotus blossom which is a symbol of purity and rebirth into paradise. We can connect this painting with some of her previous works. Like let's say for example her oneness sculptures. These are alien-like figures which we can see as celestial aliens in her painting, which we can see as the pastel little figures floating on clouds. These aliens are seen to be placed there so that she can engage the viewer's sense of sight. In the end, we can link the whole setting to the principles of Nirvana. And of course, Mori decides to keep up the general theme of her, herself, Mariko Mori, being depicted as the figure inside of her paintings. In this painting, she is depicted as wearing a headdress, and the design is made completely by her. We can associate her designing these clothes with her past. In the late 1980s, she was studying at a fashion college, and she even worked as a fashion model. And then in 1989, she went to study at the School of Art, and then she graduated in 1992. Continuing on with the passion for art, she later moved to New York City and participated in the Whitney Museum of American Art. Ever since then, she has been fascinated with Japanese culture as well as making new futuristic things in her art. Another important detail to be paying attention to here is her eyes. She has light blue eyes, which can often be described as pupilless, and she seems to be looking somewhere beyond our own vision. This painting is also hugely inspired by the Amida Buddha. Similar to the Buddha, she is above a lotus, and her right hand is in a muja of blessing and teaching, and then the circle formed by her index finger and thumb is the sign of the wheel of law. Not only is this painting inspired by the Amida Buddha, but it is also inspired by the Kichi Hoten or Kichi Jotun. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, so I'll just put it up there. I'm not sure. Both of these paintings exude a strong sense of serenity, happiness, as well as fertility, and we can easily see the elegance in both of them. Especially through things like their gowns. Both of their gowns appear to be extremely lightweight, and they also have a wish-granting jewel. Rilakshimi is originally where Kichihoten is from. It's an Indian goddess who was eventually incorporated into Buddhism. This goddess was well known for fertility, fortune, as well as beauty. So I believe that Marika Mori was trying to envelop these traits into her own painting to depict herself on that and take on the persona that this goddess once did. Which then takes us into the function. As stated before, Mariko Mori was trying to dissolve her own personas with the Kiji Hoten as well as the Amida Buddha. The Amida Buddha was often symbolized as compassionate because with its celestial attendants, aka the little aliens that we see depicted everywhere in Mori's painting, as well as the ones surrounding in the original painting of the Amida Buddha, these celestial figures are known as for helping people and helping them achieve their goals, as well as specifically and especially enlightenment. As we can see, Sri Lakshmi, as well as Amida Buddha, both have specific traits that people would be looking for and take liking to in rulers of the land, as well as the spiritual realm. Using herself, she was trying to rather depict herself with these traits to lure the audience into not only her painting, idea of enlightenment as well as nirvana for all. Believe it or not, Mori patroned these works for herself as she is interested in these cultures because it relates to her home religion as well as her whole entire country's religion, Buddhism. Well, this work was specifically made by herself with its exceptional work and amazing detail, as well as the great function it made it around museums and is now greatly appreciated by not only Buddhists, but many cultures worldwide. Mariko Mori's Pureland would definitely have fit its function in its time and place. The painting makes the observer feel peace and enveloped in tranquility, which matched her ideals of making desire for her customers so that she herself in those paintings could fill those di d <laughs> desires by giving this, once again, sense of nirvana and peace in her religion with its idealistic traits. When I try to think of this painting style, all that comes to mind is Mariko Mori's own individual style, which she has created herself by using futuristic elements as well as her personal connections to her works. 
Another one of her works you may have heard of is Play With Me, which is made in 1994. Now let's move on to Shiva as the Lord of Dance, see 11th century Copper Loy Chola period. Here Shiva is being depicted as Nataraha, the Lord of Dance, in a ring of fire. He takes on the role of the cosmic dancer who creates and redestroys the universe to make a new universe every time. In his hair, we can see a crescent moon and a datura flower, which helps us to further depict his feral nature. The three flames on his halo are hell, earth, and heaven. Shiva overcomes the ignorance of the world, which we can see through his dancing pose with his right leg on the demon dwarf. Shiva is being shown with multiple different hands. The right hand is holding a drum, which is the symbol of creation. The back left hand has a flame within a bull, which symbolizes destruction leading to creation. The front right hand shows a signal that tells the worshiper, worshiper to have no fear, basically reassuring them that after destruction, things will, things will be okay. The front left hand is pointing to the left leg, which shows that Shiva's activities will bring salvation in the end. During the Chola period when this was made, the rulers were highly dedicated to Shiva, especially his role as the Lord of the Dance, which led to making many temples in his honor, which further led to artists being patron, which used to use bronze and copper like this structure, which is where things, which is where this figure of Shiva as the Lord of Dance arose from. The function of this figure was intended for a temple, as worshippers would visit the space daily because the sculptures were seen as gods. And who really wouldn't want to see their god in person and worship them like that? In the end, we can link both Shiva and Pure Land together through their heavy religious aspects. In Shiva, we have Shiva being depicted as Nataraha, who is known for being the cosmic dancer who brings the universe to destruction, while reviving it in the end to create anew. The different gods like Vishnu, Shiva, Devi, and Amar are all being combined into this one cosmic dancer, which is similar to Pure Land in its own aspect. Well, in Pure Land, we have Mori depicting herself while taking on different personas like Amida Buddha or Sri Lakshmi to create a central god or figure of spirit, which is what Shiva did as well. While these two works have many things similar, they also have many differences. These two works contrast each other and highlight how civilizations change and have many differences in the ways that they work as well as how different innovations are made throughout time, or mediums to draw people into your culture or even your religion. The Shiva reflects how other cultures do it, but Mori demonstrates modern th day things and how they work, at least revealing how art styles change throughout time as cultures adapt and grow to new techniques.